Hi guys, my name is Artur and today I would like to show you a really nice library that lets you control a global state inside your React.js application. You might be already familiar with Redux, Context API or other solutions. However, today I would like to show you a really, really simple library which is called React Hooks Global State. So actually, uh, I think it's a great name for this library because it's um, self-explanatory. So we have uh, two simple hooks that we can use for managing the global state. There is one catch that the state should be just one level deep. However, I think for most of the applications, it's uh, actually enough. Okay, so uh, here is a really a simple application. Uh, here we have some uh, cryptocurrency rates and here we have the default currency that we can change. So uh, I will make a global hook state uh, that will let us uh, store information about the default currency and maybe default uh, language. So we will see that it's super easy um, to do. So before uh, shooting the video, I just installed the React Hooks global state and I will use it in my Next.js application. Of course, you can use it in any React.js or Next.js application. It should work uh, just fine. Um, there are also some supports for Redux middlewares. So if you want to use the Redux DevTools extension, there's no problem. You can use that with this uh, library. Um, the usage is super simple. You have to just import the create uh, global state uh, function and then you can provide the initial state to this function. So let's do it. Um, I will go to my editor and I have uh, the folder which I called just state and then I created the index.js um, uh, file. So first of all, for uh, we're gonna need uh, to import uh, the library which is called create global state. Um, then, then we have to just uh, call the function create global state and provide um, some initial um, state. Usually uh, we can just provide the state we need in our application so for instance, it can be the settings uh, currently logged in user, some items that user can fetch from the database or from the backend. And then we have um, two variables. One is set global state and the second is use global state. So whenever you want to change some um, state variable, you just call the first one. If you want to read, then you are using the use global uh, state. So I will just prepare the initial state, which would be default currency, which I want to be American dollar and then I want to have also the default language which would be um, English and then all, all I'm doing here is exporting the use global state and set global state so that's enough what I have to do about this state no redusters no action creators um, no uh, boilerplate like we have in the redux or redux toolkit just one file and super simple uh, state. So let's go to this application. Uh, this application is really simple one. So basically we have here uh, some uh, main uh, tag. Then inside this, we have two um, currency components that are in passing the Bitcoin or Ethereum. And then uh, inside this currency, I'm using the use SVR, another great library that you can use for storing state for your API calls. I will cover that for you in separate video. However, today we will not talk about the use SVR. You just have to know that this is something like Axios, but way better. And here we are just uh, calling the external API, which is the coingecko.com, the, the page from which you can uh, use various APIs. And one of the APIs is that you can just check the exchange rates against some currency. So I'm passing here USD dollars, and then I'm passing the ID of the cryptocurrency, which is Bitcoin or Ethereum. And now I would like to um, just change the behavior of the default currency uh, select so we can uh, change uh, the state and uh, this component responsible for that is the navigation component which I'm just having it uh, here so first of all uh, maybe let's um, set uh, let's let's import our state so let's import uh, set. first of all we're gonna set the global state um, so inside the navigation component I will just do something like um, con const handle uh, handle currency uh, so this would be the function and inside this function we're gonna have the event 
events, uh, prevent defaults. Uh, actually, no, this is this is not needed. So I'm usually uh, preventing default behavior in the form. However, today we will just do the on change um, handler. So this would be uh, handle currency change right so maybe let's call it change and and here we can just use um set uh, global state use this function and here you can see that we already have inside the vs code uh some really nice uh, tooltip with the help so we have here the default currency or the language so the vs code uh, picked it up uh, this this hook also has great support for typescript so if you are type typescript guy or typescript gal then you can just use it uh, without any hassle and then we have default currency and then i will all i do here i will just uh, set it to uh, e um, target uh, value um, and then uh, of course uh, so, so this would uh, basically change um, our state so uh, I will check the application if it still works however right now uh, nothing happens right because I'm just changing the state but I'm not reacting to state anywhere and I will actually read um, the state right now inside our currency component so here I will just type maybe something like currency equals to use global state default currency and then I can provide this value um, here okay actually I will move it um, up and then I will use the default currency here inside um, our call to the external API so right now I will be checking the default currency this should work for the first time because initially we have the US dollars and then of course if I change it to Polish water which is my native <laughs> currency in Poland or to euros which is popular in European Union um, so let's go and bam we have the first uh, error so I think this should be um, that way right so let's uh, check it okay so we have the US dollars right now and let's check um, so let's check how this works for euros okay it works for the euros um, but still we have to uh, change a bit the implementation because the formatting is wrong so of course I'm just need to provide the default currency not only to the to this external API but also I have to type it here so this would be default currency and let's check the application so okay we have the euros and this works also um, for uh, US US dollars uh, euros and uh, Polish Zlotys and then of course this currency component um, calls the external API uh, so maybe take a look on the re-render so uh, here I have the um, react uh, components uh, plugin inside my browser so whenever we are changing the state actually uh, the component re-renders so uh, for instance if I change the currency you can see that these components here here are re rendering because they are using the part of the global state however let's introduce state so this would be the default language and for instance if I would change uh, the language and the language is not used by these components I, I would expect these components to not re-render so uh, let's do it right now um, so I will just uh, maybe use the global state inside the navigation uh, component here you can see that I have the really really basic uh, functionality for translations so we have the language we have English we have Polish and for instance uh, if I go here and if I would just write maybe uh, the language and um, Let's write it just uh, default language. Then I, I can use that uh, here and pass it to this function as well. So this would be, of course, on change and handle uh, language change. Um, so let's write it here and we write it the same way. Let's do it that way and let's check it out. Yeah, so now you can see that we are able to change also the language, right? So let's take a look inside um, our components, whether they are re rendering or not. So 
as you can see, this component only renders because the other components are not relying on the part of the state. And of course, if we change the euros or to the Polish Zwote, you can see that these components are re rendering, uh, but these uh, navigation component stays. So as you can see, that's the super easy way to have the global state. Of course, I know that Redux is still useful, Redux and Redux Toolkit and Recoil and many other libraries because these libraries are meant for really complex state. However, if your application is not that complicated, if you just need to store, you know, simple stuff like language or currency or even the authenticated user stuff, uh, then I think this is, you are perfectly fine to just use the um, React uh, hooks global state. See, it's super, super simple. Just one file, then you have two hooks uh, and you don't have to care about the context API providers context. You don't don't have to um, be aware that something is re rendering every time you change the state, even you are not using part of that state. Everything is done for you uh, by the creator of uh, this great library. So um, if you like this video, I highly recommend you to check out this library, to go to this uh, repository, smash the star button like I did. Yeah, so that's enough uh, for today. Thanks for your attention and see you on this channel.